let me give you a few tips that could help you get your blue belt as quickly as possible. Um, wait, that's not right. All right, I got four tips for you. Tip number one is consistency. Well, I bet nobody saw that coming, but it's true. With any skill that you truly want to build, you will find that the common denominator is that you must be consistently practicing that skill every week and every month. It's okay if that means you can only train twice a week, but if you're looking to get better quickly and get your blue belt as quickly as possible, the simple truth is that the more days you train in a row, the faster your growth will be. This doesn't mean train for seven days in a row and then don't train for the next three weeks. That's not how that works. You have to be consistent every single week. So if you're consistently able to train for five days a week, try to hit your five days of training weekly. So when you hit a whole month, which is four weeks of training on average, then that means you're gonna accumulate a total of 20 training days in one month. That's gonna be more than double of the person that only gets to train twice a week. And then we laugh at them because they suck. On top of that, you're more likely to retain the techniques that your instructor teaches you because sometimes the instructors teach the same techniques in the same week or for the same month. It's really great when it comes to improving that specific skill, whether it's a submission or a sweep or whatever it may be, because when you repeat it weekly and monthly, it's easier and easier for you to get better at it. The cumulative training that you do weekly and monthly adds up quickly. So you train 20 days a month for six months, that's gonna be 120 days of training in six months, which obviously if someone only trains twice a week, that's gonna be, they're gonna be training less than half the amount of times you are, which means you're gonna be getting better two to three times faster than them. And then they're gonna ask you, hey, but how did you get so good so fast? Tip number two, study videos or study film. I think this is huge. I've heard people tell me in the past that, oh no, white belts shouldn't watch videos because they're gonna build bad habits and they're not gonna build, uh, get, learn good techniques and they're gonna hurt people. And it's like, no, they're not. Or maybe they will, but white belts are just gonna be white belts regardless. I was a white belt, you were a white belt. You're probably a white belt if you're watching this still. But the point here is that I think it's great even for white belts to study film. Maybe don't try to watch jujitsu techniques that you saw on Instagram reels and you're like, wow, that was a cool flying triangle, let me try that. Be honest with yourself, you're not ready for that. You gotta learn the fundamentals first. I think you should watch videos on high level black belt athletes competing against each other because when you watch these high level top class athletes compete, you watch what the highest level of jiu-jitsu skill can do for you. That means watching athletes like Gordon Ryan, Andre Gavao, or even Joseph Chen, who's an upcoming athlete, and Nicky Ryan, or you can even watch Nicky Rod. He's not a black belt, but they call him a black belt slayer for a reason. Or if you need another recommendation, watch the world's second best athlete, but the first place athlete in our hearts. That's right, Craig Jones, the creator of the Craig Jones Inventational. The reason I think it's important to watch high-level athletes is because even if you don't remember the techniques, which, come on, be honest with you, you probably won't, I think there's something to be said about what your brain is doing subconsciously because there's been plenty of times from white belt to blue belt to purple belt where I've watched techniques and I execute the techniques or at the very least, I'm able to see, oh, maybe I can sweep this person from here. And without realizing it or realizing after the roll, after I did the sweep, I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I saw a video on that on YouTube where I saw someone do some sort of sweep from here. Yeah, it probably wasn't beautiful, but it worked. It starts to open up your brain to the different possibilities from different positions. And at its simplest form, I think that's what matters the most. Being able to watch these high level athletes and just understanding that there's possibilities from these positions, that can go a long way. I find it hard to believe that if you had two athletes, let's say they're both white belts, both equal skill level and weight, and they both been training for the same amount of time, if you were to pit them against each other in a super fight, of, and, but after one month of training, if they were both to train for a one month, but one person studied film and the other one didn't, I guarantee you the one that studied the film is gonna be better than the one who did it, simply because they absorbed more knowledge just by watching these videos. Even if they don't know how to execute the techniques exactly, they know these techniques exist and the possibilities, and that allows brain juices to get flowing and they start being creative, because jujitsu is a creative sport. The more creative you are, the better you are at jiu-jitsu. Number three, rolling. This one's pretty simple. The more you roll, the more you learn. The more you lose, the more you learn. In my opinion, the majority of your training should be with higher belts because they're way more, less likely to hurt you and way more likely to teach you a thing or two at the end of your roll, which is absolutely valuable. Rolling with higher belts will skyrocket your technique and your jiu-jitsu game, and you'll learn things that you didn't even know about jiu-jitsu because they're gonna be more than happy to teach you, especially if you ask them questions. People in jiu-jitsu love to help others get better. Tip number four, which is the final tip. 
don't be afraid to get submitted. I cannot urge this enough. I always tell people when I was a white belt, I came in here with the mindset of I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna try, and I'm gonna struggle, and I'm gonna get submitted, but I have to prioritize not getting hurt. So I let myself as a white belt tap out as many times as I needed to. That doesn't mean as soon as someone grabs my arm, I say tap, 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 tap. That means that when someone gets an arm bar, I'm prepared to tap, especially if I knew I didn't have an escape from here. I'm not gonna sit here and see how long they can put pressure on my elbow until either they give up or I tap out. That's just, it's not gonna work and it's a bad habit to build. You're gonna get hurt or someone's gonna let go because they feel bad and they don't wanna hurt you. And that's a bad habit because if you try to compete with that mindset, not knowing how to escape an arm bar or any other submission, they're not gonna go easy on you. They're not gonna be nice and be your friend. They're gonna hurt you. And that's gonna be your fault. So what I did as a white belt is I was more than happy to tap out. I let people get the arm bar and when I felt it getting extended, I tapped out soon enough to where I didn't get hurt. And in my opinion, that helped me a lot. That's a huge part as to why I feel like I'm really hard to submit these days because when I was a white belt, I got so much experience tapping out to people, which is funny to say, and no one judged me for it. No one's gonna judge you for being a white belt, tapping out to higher belts or even another white belt. You're just a white belt starting off, you're learning, it's okay. But what I didn't wanna do is be stubborn and not wanna tap out as a white belt. And then when I get to blue belt, start tapping out to people because I'm trying to learn new techniques. And then it just, you know, that looks a little worse. Again, it doesn't matter at all. At the end of the day, everything's just training. Even world class black belt athletes uh, tap out to their athletes. It's a training session. It's not a competition. But my point that I'm trying to get across is that if you tap out, get used to tapping out for the sake of one, not getting injured, two, learning your limits for these submissions, how much you can take without getting injured, and three, I forgot what three was. Line. Um, three was, uh, and number three, you're gonna get a lot more experience tapping out as a white belt than whatever, fuck, I don't fucking remember. Sorry, I don't remember number three. I guess there's no number three. So what I did as a white belt is that I allowed myself to tap out soon and tap out often, which means that as soon as someone got a submission, I'd be ready to tap out, but I'd wait and wait and wait until they got it tight enough to where I had to tap out. And what that taught me is I learned the limits of how far I could push my elbows, my joints, how far I can hold out for a submission before I started to feel pain, which means that now when I roll intensely, I know how far I can go before uh, getting injured. And as a white belt, I don't think I got any injuries at all. Maybe some minor aches and pains, which everyone gets, but I got no actual injuries as a white belt. Now when I got to a blue belt, that's when I was stubborn. I decided I knew I was gonna be stubborn as a blue belt and not wanting to tap two white belts. So I appreciate myself for tapping out so many times as a white belt. That made me extremely difficult to submit as a blue belt. Anyways, it's up to you. In my opinion, when like a wrestler comes into a jiu-jitsu class and they're just really stubborn and don't want to play off their back and play jiu-jitsu and play guard, their growth is going to be so much slower than if someone comes in here, even as a wrestler, they come in here and they're willing to get submitted, they're willing to play off their back and learn and get past because these people, they're the dangerous ones. They're dangerous because they know wrestling, they're good at takedowns, they're good at playing a top game. They're allowing themselves and giving themselves the vulnerability of being submitted, being passed, not dominating everybody. Because what that allows them to do is that when they spend this white belt era learning in this, with this manner, then when they start to pick up the pace in their late white belt era or when they get to blue belt, they're absolutely just dominating everybody. Because let's be honest, especially in Nogi, Jiu-Jitsu athletes are not good at wrestling. Just to recap, the four tips to getting your blue belt as quickly as possible, in my opinion, are number one, consistency. Number two, watching film. Number three, rolling. Number four, not being afraid to tap out often. If this video helped you at all, or if you watch this video, go train for a few months using these four tips, and then you get your blue belt, and then you're super happy that you got your blue belt and want to come back to this video and leave a nice comment and like and favorite this video and send it to everybody because you love this so much, then go ahead and subscribe. If you hated this video and want to just uh, really get me back, then please don't subscribe to me because that's the worst thing you could ever do. And I would really be upset. Thanks again for watching. Go watch my other videos. Go watch the Arte Suave Elite vlog. We're uploading these once a month. It takes a lot of work. My recent video was uh, 47 minutes long, which is crazy. I was trying to do these videos in 15, 20 minute 
videos, but there's just so much content I get over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that it's hard to pack it all into a 15 minute video. So please do me a favor, go watch these videos. I need some watch hours. If you enjoyed it, if it made you laugh because I think it was funny, then uh, leave a comment and consider subscribing because I'm trying to make YouTube my job so I could bring more high quality Jiu Jitsu content to you guys because I'm a professional Jiu Jitsu videographer and I want to keep doing this on YouTube for you guys. So please do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, help me out, please. Give me some watch hours, watch my videos, tell your nephews and nieces to watch it. Thank you so much, bye.